Woodworking for Mere Mortals is sponsored by Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. I don't really believe you need an edge jointer for every single project. For the most part, when you buy wood from a home center, the edges are already pretty darn square. And if there is a little bit of a gap, it'll all come together when you clamp it. Putting half of these clamps on the top and half on the bottom should help keep it flat. Okay, I made up a couple of those and let them dry overnight. This one is a little bit longer and I'm going to glue it up into three sections. I can clean off some of that dry glue and sand these all flat. My first cuts are going to be to cut the two long sides and the bottom to length. I'm setting my blade to a 7 degree angle. I'll cut the base to its width. And I'll use that same 7 degree bevel for the two sides. I can use this template of the end piece to line up this long side and mark how long it needs to be. This bevel is going to be parallel with this one, so I'll just slide this over and make a cut. You may be asking yourself where I've been since that very last shot you just saw. Well, let's see, I shot that little opening bit. And then I went to the supermarket and picked up some stuff for tacos for dinner tonight. And oh yeah, I spent a couple hours redesigning all of this. Usually when I design something in SketchUp, it well gives me a pretty good idea of what the finished product is going to look like. But this time, when I started putting this all together, I realized that these proportions just don't look right. <laughs> It was just too wide and here's my side piece and it just looked too squatty, I guess. So instead of this side view, I redesigned it to where it fits on one page, which is actually a little bit better. I can't really explain why this looks better to me, but it does. All right, now I'll just trim everything down a little bit more. Since the sides are a little bit shorter and these ends are taller, this angle here I've changed to 14 degrees. I saved a couple of these cutoff strips with that seven degree angle and these will help me clamp up the sides to the bottom. If I can put this beveled angle up against here, this will give me something to clamp against. And with that all dry, I can use one of those strips with that seven degree bevel to create a little drilling jig for those fancy pants dowel joints. <laughs> with that bevel at the top, I'm gonna drill a series of quarter inch diameter holes. Now I can hold this beveled side against my box and all that does is just gives me a straight drilling guide so that the hole doesn't come out this way or that way. I'm gonna stick a dowel in there for now just to help hold this together. And I'm just cutting these little pieces out of a quarter inch dowel. And I'll glue them in. These two boards are for the end pieces. I'm gonna stick them together with some carpet tape. And I'm gluing this cutting template on with some spray adhesive. I'll cut this out on my bandsaw. And I'll drill a one inch hole through both of these for the handle. Before I glue those ends on, I'm going to saw these dowels flush. 
I'm gonna glue these sides on. I'm gonna run this one inch dowel through these holes just to make sure they're lined up properly. These ends are slightly oversized so I can sand them flush with the rest of the box when it's dry. With these ends dry, now I can put dowels in them. I can use that same board to drill these holes, only this time I'll just keep the bevel on the top. I'm using this one inch diameter dowel as a handle. I'm gonna put some quarter inch pins in these too. This is a sheet of labels that I uh, just peel them off. And if you notice, I printed a mirror image of these so that they'll transfer the right way. And they look really faded out, but actually that's a lot of ink on there. Now the nice thing is you really don't have to work fast. The ink just doesn't dry on here. And the only thing you gotta be careful of is you don't touch it or it'll smear. First I'll cut these two apart. I'll put this about halfway up on this tape. And here's where I just want to be really, really careful that once I put it on there, I don't move it around, otherwise it'll smear. And once it's on there, it dries almost instantly, so you don't have to worry about it smearing. And I'll seal it all in with a few coats of spray lacquer. And if you'd like to own this garden tote, please check down in the description on how you can place a bid for it. Remember, 100% of the winning bid goes to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I really wanna thank all of you who have been participating in these auctions. This is the third one, and I'm really proud of the money we're raising for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And if this is your first time here to Woodworking for Mere Mortals, welcome. I'm glad to have you aboard, and I hope you'll take just a second to click that subscribe button so you won't miss a video. I have new videos posted every Friday. And if you really like this, show you might want to check out my other show mere minutes you can click over here and see last week's episode and i hope you'll also follow me over on facebook where you can post pictures of your own projects for everybody to see and if you have any questions for me please feel free to post them over on my twitter page as always thank you for watching and i'll see you next friday